Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. Bon dia. I don't. That's the only three that I know. Uh, I need somebody needs to teach me in Creole. Uh, so good morning to all of you. Uh, great to see you. As well as good morning to all of you that are watching from home. I hope you had a great week. I was reflecting this morning on what we do every Sunday. You know, when we were rehearsing here with the praise band. You know, do you, do you realize this is like a privilege that we have to come in the house of the Lord every Sunday? Um, you know, it's a privilege for us. So let us never take this for granted. Let us always approach this time that we have here together as the most special time of our week. So I have a few announcements. Um, you see there in the back of your program our uh, youth activity. So for all of you, the young boys and girls that are here, teenagers, we're restarting our youth activities this Tuesday. Uh, if you remember, like that was pre-COVID, we used to have like a dinner and then we did character building programs. Then we also going to, this Tuesday, you can come and sign up to the music classes that we'll have after. So make sure you're here Tuesday night. So if you need transportation, call Mr. Sidney, call Captain Claudia, call me, uh, let us know that you need transportation. But that's, we're going to restart um, again this, this next Tuesday, two days from now. You see the core cadets will also resume on Sundays. We're going to start in August 29. So core cadets, we need you engage on that. Uh, there is a new item that was just shared with us, the, the Territorial uh, Young Adult Retreat. That's going to be in Atlanta, September 24 to 26. So if you are interested in that, please contact Mr. Sidney or Captain Claudia. Um, that should be a, a great time there in Atlanta. And you're also going to see... Uh, um, special request that we have there so there is a program in the florida division called desync it's a divisional soldiers ideas needs and concerns that's a group of soldiers so you have to be a soldier that comes and they represent their their cores their units and they are visit they will talk about some of the needs they will talk about some ideas and we mr alex was our representative for a while and uh He's now passing the baton, and we're looking for another soldier that's willing to take on that responsibility. Is that once a month, Captain? Once a quarter. Once a quarter. So it's a once a quarter meeting. Uh, so if you are a soldier, uh, we will, you know, if that's something that you would like to represent uh, the Port Charlotte Corps uh, on those meetings, please let us know. We're looking for a representative. Um, with that, I'm going to invite the praise band to start making their way to the stage while I'm going to lead us in the call to worship. So praise band, start making your way. The call to worship this morning is inside of your program and as well as the words will be in the screen. Children of God, welcome. Welcome to this place of love and grace. Welcome to this place of hope and perseverance. God invite all of us to be a part of the beloved community. God invite all of us to share in the good news. We are welcome just as we are. We are loved just as we are. In gratitude for all of this, let us worship God. Amen. Are we ready to worship the Lord this morning and to listen and to find out what His Spirit has for us this morning? Amen. So we're going to invite to stand and we'll have a time of praise and worship.
God is good. All the time. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God of compassion, God of mercy, we come before you this morning to give you praise and honor. Amen. Hallelujah. We present to you. Amen. Jesus is here. I feel it. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Amen. Amen. We present to you this morning, God, I set up prayer and we present to you. Have your way in us. In the Holy Name, in the Father Name, in the Holy Spirit, everybody say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. As we have been doing in the past Sundays, uh, we're going to review our doctrine number 10, and I invite you to read together with me. We believe that it is the privilege of all believers to be wholly sanctified, and that their Holy Spirit and soul and body may be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, everyone. So glad to see everyone. Um, every time my church leaders, my pastors, ask me to read the scripture, I think, okay, I'll read that scripture. And then I start to read it, and I think, wait a minute, I don't know this whole story. I kind of know the story, but I don't know the situation around it. So I always start about Wednesday, and I look at the situation. Now I'm working um, several days a week, so I sat down this morning to, to read the situation of the scripture I'm going to read today, First uh, Samuel um, chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. But as I looked at it, um, it's about the book of Samuel, and um, it's about, you have to go back to Judges when the Israelites were being led back in, and God was faithful to them, but they were disobedient to God. And we had some wars and bad times and thumbs being cut off and great toes being cut off. And I said, whoa, I can't read all this this morning here on Sunday. This is too much. And so I said, I guess I'm going to have to go back and review. And I can't wait to get home and go back and review it because there's probably 20 good movies coming out of Judges if you wanted to, if you wanted to watch them. But this... Um, my son asked me a question last week. I didn't know how to answer him. I kind of knew the answer, but has anybody ever asked you this question? If there really is a God, why does he let all this happen? I didn't really have any great words for him, but if you read Judges and if you read Samuel, I, I got my answer, okay? If we're faithful, to God, he says he'll be faithful to us. And if we're not faithful to him, he's not faithful, you know, to us. And God arranges things, maybe not in a second, but he makes it right over time. And that's what he's doing from Judges to Samuel. He's getting a new leader set into place so that the countries will be obedient to God. Life will be better. It doesn't happen in a minute. But um, that's what he's doing here in the book of Samuel. So he uses a lady named Hannah, and um, she is the wife of Elkanah, and Elkanah has two wives. 
Um, his first wife has, well, he's, one of his wives has children, Penina. But Hannah didn't have any children. God hadn't seen fit to help her get pregnant. So chapter 1 of Samuel, 1 Samuel 9 through 20 says this. One time after they had finished their meal in the house of the Lord uh, at Shiloh, Hannah got up. She was deeply distressed and cried bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. Meanwhile, Eli the priest was sitting in his place by the door. Hannah made a solemn promise, Lord Almighty, look at me, your servant. See my trouble and remember me. Don't forget me. If you give me a son, I promise that I will dedicate him to you for his whole life and that he will never have his hair cut. Hannah continued to pray and, and uh, to the Lord for a long time, and Eli watched um, her lips. She was praying silently. Her lips were moving, but she made no sound. So Eli, the priest, that's not good to think your priest thinks this about you, thought that she was drunk. And he said to her, stop making a drunken show of yourself. Stop your drinking and sober up. No, I'm not drunk, sir, she answered. I haven't been drinking. I am desperate, and I've been praying, pouring out my troubles to the Lord. I don't think I am a worthless woman. I have been praying like this because I am so miserable. So go in peace, Eli said, and may the God of Israel give you what you have asked for. May you always think kindly of me, she replied. And then she went away, ate some food, and was no longer uh, sad. The next morning, Elkanah and his family got up early, and after worshiping the Lord, they went back home to Ramah. Elkanah um, knew his wife, Hannah, and the Lord answered her prayer. So it was she became pregnant, gave birth to a son, and she named him Samuel and explained, I asked the Lord for him. Now, this is God's doing, okay? He's, he's put Hannah, who never had any children, he's given her a child, and he's going to use this child to help bring peace. Okay? So ends the reading of the scripture. Well, it's hard to hear yourself think Above the noise on our street And it's hard to cool down When your body just generates heat And it's hard to write songs When you feel like you can't even speak But it ain't hard to tell you the only thing I need And I've been on the wrong end of too many a telephone call Trying to say too much and just sending up saying nothing at all Till I'm pacing the floors and I'm bouncing my head off the wall But it ain't hard to tell this will all be well in the fall If you can just hold on Hold on Hold on with me Cause I can only be so strong so long without you holding on to me
I taught her how to do that. <laughs> Thank you. One day I will do it for you guys. Are you going to wear what she wants? Yes. <laughs> you all don't, you, you don't know your captain. So today we're going to be starting a new series. First of all, I want to say something. It's always a great joy when I see Ms. Lola reading the passage because she does her homework. Basically, like, you know, I always sprint, and in a, most of my sermons uh, end up being like five, six pages long. When Ms. Lola reads the message, le- read the, the scripture, I can pretty much just rip it the first two pages because she already did all the homework for me. So thank you for that, Ms. Lola. You made a, we're going to go home a little earlier today. Roger's like, yes. <laughs> so the topic of this series is covenant. Covenant. You see, when we hear this idea of having a relationship with God, sometimes it means having God as a friend, as a father, as a teacher. You see, but there is one way that the Bible talks about this relationship, and that's the partnership between an individual and God. Or, or a people, or a country in God. We see that in Genesis. God created the world, and everything was perfect. And then, God appointed humans to take care of it. We know how the story goes. Humans, the humans rebelled. And they, create, they want to create their own world. But that's not just Adam and Eve. We're talking about the whole humanity rebelled against God. So God does what he does best, which is be loving, merciful, compassionate, giving us another chance. He selects a small group of people to make another agreement with him. And this is called covenant. You see, in the covenant, God promises something. In exchange, he asks the person that enters the covenant with them to fulfill certain commitments. But why? Because the the goal of the covenant is to bring glory to God and to benefit the world. The same people that neglected, the same people that that rebel against God, the covenant comes to help them. So then we come to the passage, what Ms. Lola read, you know, you you got it, she she hit at all the main bullet points, Israel rebelled and... We see the book of Judges, how it talks about how many times Israel failed on their commitment. Because Israel had entered into a covenant with God in Mount Sinai. But then when they left slavery, you know, they pretty much like, again, rebelled against God and broke the covenant. They were supposed to be faithful to God. But they were not. So then, today we're going to be the scripture... That concentrate on Hannah, a woman that could not have a child. And then when she had a child, we're going to also be touching bases on Samuel that became a prophet of the Lord. So we see chapters 1 and 2 introduce Hannah, a woman, a woman that's grieving because she cannot have children. But by God's grace, she's able to have a son, and she named him Samuel. And Hannah then makes a promise to God in, chap- in verse 11 of chapter 1 that says, Lord Almighty, if you only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and do not forget your servant, and give her a son, I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. So the Lord came to the rescue. She became pregnant, and she had a son named Samuel. So throughout the the process, you have to understand, she was made fun, like Miss Lola shared, by the other wife. And she was even accused of being drunk as she was praying. So you have to understand the value of women in the Old Testament was next to none. And then if you couldn't even have a child, basically women was useless on that scenario. But then we see in her joy that she sings when she's able to fulfill, you know, to receive that gift from God. We see the chapter 2 of 1 Samuel. It's a beautiful poem that she writes, that she shares, that she sings. And her words was, her words was all about how God opposes the proud and exalts the humble. 
And this is the theme of 1 Samuel. And her poem is placed in the beginning of the book in order for us to see this key concept. First, then we come to chapter 3. We see that the Lord now was calling Samuel. Remember, he, like Miss Ola share, he went under the teaching of Eli. But Eli had some bad, wicked sons. And then the Lord had already been revealed to Eli that said, listen, because I'm going to kill both of your sons. Because they are doing some messed up stuff. And it's like, I don't want to prove that. So then we see in 1 Samuel, Samuel chapter 3, that now God is speaking with Samuel as he was under the teaching. And then we see in verses 2 to 21, if you have your Bible, it's 1 Samuel 3. Verses 2 to 21. If you don't, then I'll read it for you. One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was laying down in his usual place. The limp of God had gone yet, yet had not yet to gone out, and Samuel was laying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lay down. So he went and he lay down. Verse 6. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. So Eli replied, My son, I did not call you. Go back and lay down. Now Samuel did not know yet that was the Lord, because the word of the Lord has not been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you call me. Then Eli realized the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go lie down. If he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Verse 10, the Lord came and stood there calling, uh, calling as the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel. They will make the ears of everyone who hears about tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything that I spoke uh, against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin that he knew about it. His sons blasphemed against God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atonished for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning, and then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here I am. What was it that he said to you, Eli asked? Do not hide from me. May God deal with you so everly severely if you hide it, anything from me that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and, nothing, and, and hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, he is the Lord. Let him do what's good. In his eyes. Here we have Samuel being used because of God's love and the promise that Hannah made it to God. Later we see more how God, how Samuel uh, was used by God. But it's important for us to us to remember that the Lord, He wants to select us. He wants to provide somebody. To see his plans being accomplished. And here's the thing. He doesn't have to. He's God. But he gives us this privilege to be part of it. To be the one that are carrying on his promises to others. The Lord is faithful. And his faithfulness endures for all the ages. To all the ages. There are times that we're going to have difficult seeing that. There are times when we're going to wake up in the morning and it's like, I don't, you know, Lord, I don't feel your faithfulness today. I just 
don't feel it. I just don't see it. And that's part of our human nature. Sometimes we're going to doubt it. Sometimes we're going to have questions. Sometimes we're even going to be mad of God. However, we have two responses if we ever face that situation. One is to trust in Him and hope that He's going to respond to our prayers due to His covenant of love towards us. Or the other option is to grow bitter towards Him. So what can we learn from Hannah today? Well, first thing is she had a problem. Duh. We all have problems, don't we? You see, we may, facing, we may be facing a heartbreaking problem right now. You know, it may not be fertility like it was for Hannah, but it may be some other issue. You will know. But whatever it is, we have an option today to trust in God. Because Hannah's story offers us hope and direction. Number two, And she's a woman, and she can't have a child. What is, what's the driving force for her? She could have basically just said, it is what it is, I quit. Why am I going to worship God? But we see in Scripture that every year they went to the temple and she prayed. And the reason why she prayed is because she believed She believed there was something else for her over there. She believed that that wasn't the end of the story for her. You see, she could have chosen to allow her pain and her misfortune to make her anger and bitter towards God. But instead, she chose to be humble and to trust in God's love and power. And also, Hannah promised Hannah understood that God's gift to her was supposed to be used to honor him. Think about how difficult it is. You see, and that's, that's one thing that I can only imagine. Like, I, I, I can't understand. I really can't. I mean, and you know why. It's like, you know, I don't know what it is to have a child inside of you and then see that child being born. And then after just a few months or so, give that child away. I don't know what that means. I don't know what kind of, uh, you know, I can only imagine, but I don't know what kind of emotional, mental attachment it's involved in all this. And that's something that I will never understand. But I can imagine how difficult it was for her to think, hold on, I made a promise. Here's my child, the one that I pray, the one that I so wanted. And God gave it to me. But now, I'll give it to him, back to him to be taught, to be disciple, to be used by God, to be under the teaching of somebody else. You know, only you mothers can understand that. We can only imagine. And as, as much as painful and probably grieving, she knew that all those blessings and the gift that she received came from the Lord and therefore go back to Him. You see, I'm not sure what kind of uh, difficult circumstances you're dealing with today. Um, I don't know if you have imp- something in your life right now that you're thinking, this is impossible. I don't know the answer for this. You know, we, I think we, we have a, a great example here in the life of Hannah in the covenant of love that God made with this generation for us to say, okay, 
this is not the end of the story. Whatever problem you're facing today, we have the choice of just become bitter and say, see, God doesn't really care for me. God doesn't really, he's not really looking at me. Or we can say, you know what, God? I'm going to search for you. Because I don't think this is the end. There is something big for me. And I think like even if you stop for a moment. And now for what I have to ask you. you go back in your memories and look of a moment where you thought this is horrible. And how now you can look back and see. Okay, God had a plan for all this. I think all of us here will have moments when we can look back and say, well, at that moment, I felt terrible. But now I can see that that event trickled something different, changed the trajectory of my life. For me, it was even like, you know, I thought I was going to be a soccer player. And then when I got hurt and I was cut off from the team, now I look back and I was just like, you know, if I was a soccer player, I probably would have never met my wife. I would have never really met God. I would have never met the Salvation Army. Then I think of like when my parents moved from one neighborhood to the other. And I loved that neighborhood. And I was like, I was really sad. I was really frustrated. And then guess where we move? We move across the street from the Salvation Army. And that's when I saw for the first time those funny looking people coming up with their uniforms. And I was like, what's this building? It's not big enough to have an airport inside. Because I thought there were pilots. It's like, no, this is a Salvation Army. Salvation what? And they said, well, it's a Christian church. And it's like, oh, those Christians are so boring. They probably don't watch TV. They probably only wear like a long skirt. That was my idea. Like they don't cut their hair. They don't use deodorant. That's what I thought of Christians. Like I thought I was like, they don't, they don't, you know, they, they're all about the money. That's what I used to think. That was my idea of Christianity. It's like, they don't party, they don't go out, they don't do anything. They're so boring. It's like, I don't want nothing to do with it. And then the whole time I was like, I really miss the old neighborhood with all my friends were there. Now I'm like three hours away, Lord. It's like, this is awful. Today I'm one of those funny guys. And I can tell you, a life with Jesus is not boring. A life with Jesus is actually pretty exciting. I wouldn't go back for anything. So this is for us today. You know, where is the situation now that you can connect with the past and say, you know, God already came through this one time, even when I wasn't able to see, even when he gave me a different answer than what I was praying. And now we make that circle and we come back again. What is that for you today that you say, Lord, I just need to bring that to you. I need to believe that everything's going to be okay. Whatever okay means. Because here's the other thing. We say okay and then we have our idea what okay is. When we go to the Lord so many times and say, Lord, I want this because of that. And that means okay to me. If you give me this or if you open this door or if you provide me with this thing, then that's okay. And many times the Lord's going to say, not in your time, not in your answer, I have something better for you. So, Colonel, would you be able to play the piano for us? And then I want to invite you this morning to look at the story of Hannah and to be encouraged. You know, I hope that none of us here is going to go through a situation like that where we're being made fun by other people where we feel useless, where we feel unimportant. I hope that's not yet, none of us here today. But if we ever come to this point, or if we're facing something similar, or even close to that, just remember, you're not alone. Don't just sit there and say, like, well, this is my life. Instead, just like, hey, Lord, what do you have for me? What is it today that you're calling me for? What is that day I'm going to keep praying because I'm going to keep believing? It's not going to stop here. Maybe it's a financial. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe there are some family struggles. 
I heard like a beautiful, quick testimony this morning. Somebody came to me and said, like one of my family members just confessed some things to me that I knew. And that's an example of like the faithfulness of God. That's like the story did not end it. He's still working on it. So what is that for you today? Maybe it's a negative feeling that you just need to let go like Mr. Dan said last week. I pray for them to have what they deserve. But then God changed his heart and said, well, no, I just pray for them. I think the example of Hannah just guides us toward that direction. He's faithful. He won't fail in his confidence. in our chasing and our seeking of the Lord despite wherever is we're facing in our hearts today so during this time visit with the Lord pray if you need to come here and kneel on the altar kneel on the altar you know we already spoke about this that when we kneel down we basically were saying okay Lord you know I'm not standing tall anymore it's all about you I'm going to prostrate me I'm going to kneel down before you and I will recognize that you have the power, not me. So as current our Jewish leaders in this tomb, do that. If God is speaking with you this morning, don't just harden your hearts and say, not today, Lord. I know better. Maybe next Sunday. But the Lord is speaking with you this morning. And you feel that pull and that tug on your heart. Today's the day to come before the Lord with the honest prayer, just like Hannah did. And say, Lord, look down at me. Don't forget me. I need you. God, we thank you so much for your faithfulness. We thank you because wherever we go, you are there, you are listening, you are with us, God. Lord, we need you in our world. We need you in our world. We need you in um, all of this, these, these crises that are happening, Lord, around our world. Lord, people are running for their lives. People see their broken homes. Lord, and I pray for you to continue to give us hope. Things aren't dark as they seem because we know that there is the light of Jesus. Lord, and I pray for you to be with us. Help us to be love to others. Help us to be a light to others. Help us to show others that we, that, that persevering spirit that you do answer, you are faithful, and that you are real, God. We each have a testimony to share how you are real in each one of our lives. God, thank you for working with us. Thank you for answering Hannah's prayer. Thank you for answering our prayers. Lord, help us be patient. Help us be faithful. Help us be strong. Help us to remember to be hopeful because you answer. God, I pray for our congregation and their families.
Keep us safe, Lord. Keep us hopeful. Keep us testifying to the light of Jesus. We give you all the honor and the glory today, God. Amen. I think about Hannah and I think about how she traveled and she and her family, Elkanah, they didn't live in Shiloh. They traveled to Shiloh and it was a journey. It was a journey to go and it was a dangerous journey. They could have been robbed. In fact, many of the people of the Lord stopped traveling to the tabernacle because it was, it was hard. It was hard. And yet their family continued to travel to the tabernacle to praise the Lord and to honor the Lord. And I think of that because they were glad. They were faithful. We have our song today is song number 805 is I am so glad. And even though their journey was tough and hard and it was a sign of faithfulness, they were still glad in the Lord. They were still knew that God was with them. So let's stand together and we're going to stand knowing that God is with us. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. Love brought him down, my poor soul to redeem. Yes, it was love made him die on the tree. Oh, I am certain that Jesus loves me. Are you certain Jesus loves you? Right? Let's sing verse number three. If one should ask me, how should I tell? Glory to Jesus, I know very well. God's Holy Spirit with my death agree, constantly witnessing Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. In this assurance I find sweetest rest, trusting in Jesus I know I am blessed. Satan dismayed from my soul now does flee, when I just tell him that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. coming forward. Um, we have our friend, almost like a son, Jonathan Munoz. He was one of our young people, our 11, 12 year old from our first congregation and is visiting us this week. But we also want to be in prayer because we have some young people almost similar to making that faithful journey like Hannah, but they're going off to school. We have Libby and we also have Isaiah who will be traveling soon. I know this week and the next week to um, Trebekah to Nashville and also to New York City. And we remember Kafumba and Jessica and our other college age students that are going to college to make their faithful journey to the Lord, not to the Lord, but in the Lord about what they're studying and to better their family and to better their lives. And so make sure to greet them and wish them well um, as they go off this, this next couple of weeks to their, 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 their educational journey. So now Jonathan will give us the word of benediction. 
Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody enjoyed the message this morning. Bow your heads and pray with me, please. Dear Father, we come to you this morning in your house with such gratitude. We thank you for giving us the privilege to live in a beautiful country where we can gather to worship and speak about your word without any repercussion. Let us not be naive and forget our brothers and sisters across the world facing many new and old challenges. Especially within the last few weeks, we want to uplift them this morning. Continue to show them your presence and give them comfort in these difficult times. We are with them. Thank you for the blessings you continue to pour out on us and loved ones, even when we may not deserve it. As many start a new work week tomorrow, continue to guide us in all that we do. May it be for your glory. We thank you for your love, and may we continue to serve outside of this core. We love you, and we thank you. Amen. May go in peace.